All right, good afternoon. Hi again, welcome. My name is Ileana and I'm a librarian at the San Francisco Public Library. Welcome to our pen and food coloring painting workshop with our amazing partners at the Museum of the African Diaspora or MOAD. Thank you MOAD for today's workshop. You will need a few supplies that you can find in your home. Uh, we'll drop that in the chat in a few moments um, and we'll have the supply list available. So thank you for being here with us for more than a month, our celebration of Black History Month at the San Francisco Public Library. We want to emphasize that reflection, open dialogue, interdisciplinary education, and shared advocacy needs to take place in our communities during Black History Month, as well as all year round. Check out the More Than a Month webpage at the San Francisco Public Library to see our upcoming events, amazing artists, awesome book lists and more that align with the 2022 national theme, Black Health and Wellness. We are on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatush Ohlone, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula and continue to live, work and play here today. As the indigenous stewards of this land and in accordance with their traditions, the Ramatush Ohlone have never ceded lost nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place, as well as for all peoples who reside in their traditional territory. We wish to pay respects by acknowledging the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramatush community and by affirming their sovereign rights as first peoples. Before we start, a huge thanks to the friends of the San Francisco Public Library for their generous support of the special series. We cannot do this without them. And without further ado, let me welcome Sade, an education program manager with the Museum of the African Diaspora. Sade was born in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, is a multidisciplinary artist, educator, and e-keeping enthusiast. Her creative work and teaching style are greatly influenced by the wonderful visual artists theater performers and storytellers of her childhood community. As she takes it away with our workshop, please feel free to add any questions that you have in the chat and um, she would be more than happy to answer them. Thank you so much. Take it away, Sude. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was such a warm introduction. I appreciate it so much. And I am always happy to be here and I'm so glad that we have folks that decided to join us on this Monday afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Um, <clears throat> my name is Sade Gabreyes, and I'm an educator at the Museum of the African Diaspora. And today, we're going to be looking at painting with food coloring. And I'm, I'm so excited because these are sometimes the things that we find in our cupboards and our drawers. And to be able to create art beyond just the culinary um, use of these items is one of my favorite things. And today, I am I'm going to ask you a couple of questions at the end. But in the beginning, these are the things that we'll be doing. I'm going to do an introduction. I think I'm halfway there uh, finishing that since we have 45 minutes. Um, I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. But I welcome all of your questions. and. Um, throughout the activity. Um, and we're going to show examples of watercolor painting. In fact, I'm just going to show you one um, example today, and then I'm going to move you over to my workstation. And hopefully, we'll work together and we'll create together and, and have fun. And we'll uh, start with watercolor painting. We'll do Q&A and we'll do closing. And I have a couple of questions for you uh, throughout. All right, for this workshop, these are the materials that you will need. If you don't have black pen, don't worry. We, you can use even pencil if you don't have a pen around you. The purpose of this workshop is to use things that are readily available to you. Um, white watercolor paper, or if you don't have um, any kind of um, special paper, which I don't actually, you can use 
any paper and you can layer two pieces of paper together for the, set, the, the sake of practicing this activity. And some other day you can transfer this skill over to watercolor paper. Soft paintbrush. If your paintbrush is hard, no worries again. Um, water. Uh, a plate that is not paper um, because we're just going to put water on it. So it, it, and also you don't want the color to, to uh, be on the um, paper. It would make sense. <laughs> and paper towel or a sponge to absorb any excess water. And one or more liquid food coloring any color. Um, I have primary colors um, from the grocery store, but if you have any colors in your cupboard, that should work. And especially if they're expired and you need to throw them out, this is the perfect time to put them to use. And optional, masking tape. We don't, we don't all have masking tape sitting around at home, so if you don't have it, it's not a make or break uh, for this activity, but it's useful. All right. First thing we're gonna look at is wet paint on wet paper. So what does that mean? Like, well, if you put water on paper first to kind of prime it or prepare it and then add your color, it has an effect of its own. It's amazing. It's sort of magical when you look at it. It turns into this colorful cloud on your, on your paper, but it also provides gradients and we'll talk about what gradient is and how to achieve that. So when we have, when we have watercolor, we also, one of the things that, um, that I really, really like about watercolor is the ability to let go. I like to control my drawings. I like to control my paint. Watercolor has a mind of its own. So this practice is, a spiritual practice and mental practice just as much as it is an artistic practice. So I invite you to, um, to have that flexibility while working with watercolor, or in this case, food coloring. It tends to go wherever water leaves it. And um, depending on many, many factors, water can go um, any direction on your paper. And you can see how wet paint on, uh, I'm sorry, uh, wet, wet paper uh, deals with the color. It kind of takes it to different directions, highlights some part of it, and we'll, we'll play uh, with that idea in just a little bit when I move over to my workstation. And you're like, all right, well, let's get to it. Let's get going. But before that, just a couple more minutes, I'm going to hold your attention. And one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to do is to look at the color wheel. The color wheel, as, as complex as it looks on this page, it actually isn't. Um, it's, we look at a color, a primary, the, our primary colors, blue, red, and yellow. We start with those because we can't really make any, we cannot make those colors. They cannot be made, but they can make other colors. So we see what will happen if we mix up uh, two primary colors, then maybe add a neutral color like white or black and see what happens. Um, and so the color will sort of guides us into seeing how they react to each other, how they're gonna work with each other, how they complement each other, and even when we're not mixing them, the color wheel can, can sort of help us understand how artists deal with color and how they make us see certain colors um, differently or how they make certain colors pop up. Again, we'll also practice that. Now, the other thing is wet on dry paper. Now, for those of us who would like to control the direction of the paint, this is the best, the best one yet, because you can kind of control and darken the color. The color tends to be dark and dense when you use dry paper and you apply wet paint. And we'll look at that as well. 
It's up to you. And why did I ask for pen? Well, the pen will give us it will give us sort of the, the effect that you see here. You can um, you can highlight some parts. You can guide you even if if you press even hard a little bit harder on your pen. You can guide the water. Also, it just has a nice um, a nice contrast to the light the lightness of watercolor. Watercolor by nature is kind of light, but not really. Because we see here, we see here with Jacob Lawrence, Lawrence's painting, he's using water. I cannot believe this is watercolor, right? And what do you think he used here? Now the options are wet on dry paper, wet paint on dry paper, or dry, I mean, I'm sorry, wet paint on wet paper. Which one do you think he used here on this painting? There are no wrong answers. I see in the chat. Wet on dry, okay. And what made you say that? I'm curious. Dry, wet on dry. Carol, you're right. And Kara, yeah, Sarah, is it Kara? Kara, Carol, it's precise, yeah. It's precise. Hudson, thanks for joining us. Yes, well, um, you are right, Hudson. Um, you are correct. And Joe, absolutely, the sharp edges, the sharp edges. Absolutely. And this painting is called, uh, called um, just look at it just a little bit. And, and it's just a nice painting to look at his soldiers and students. Um, and, you know, a little bit of information about Jacob Lawrence, he painted what was going on at the time, um, kind of like a journalist, kind of like a newspaper um, editor or a, a historian. He used his paint to record the things that were happening at the time. And you can kind of see here, sorry about the music, there is no music if you see the music icon. Um, but there is, if you see here how he uses, he uses um, the color wheel, like we saw earlier, um, you can see the primary colors. You can see a ne neutral color, which is the black here. And you see the blue and the yellow connecting here. Yeah. And then do you see how it, they're creating contrast? And I don't think he's mixing any of them except to make green. I don't think he's, yeah, he's mixing any of them except to make this green right over here. And maybe that shade of the, the brown or tan color um, that you see. Great. Now creating gradients. <sighs> This is the cool part, because this part, you don't actually have to do much with watercolor. It does it itself. By running and using water, it, create, it creates these layers of colors as, they, that, as, it, as the water thins out. It, it creates this dark, dense pink right here. And then as, as the water gets lighter and lighter, as you add water, more water gets lighter and lighter. And then you wash your brush, of course, and add a little bit of yellow and a lot more water, and then a little bit more yellow, less water, and more and more yellow, and it gets darker and darker. So that's how you create gradient. And gradient um, helps you show depth, distance, and also it's just beautiful. It's just a nice way to paint, all right? I'm gonna go set up my workspace. And I, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. But we're going to get started hands on in just a second. And give me about three minutes to set up my work. Well, the day gets set up, just wanted to uh, welcome any new folks that are joining us. Um, thanks for being here. We have a supply list in the chat and we'll be adding that periodically as folks come in. Um, and um, just a reminder that um, 
you are at the pen and food coloring painting workshop with Moad and today. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we will um, have today answer them. And uh, we'll also be adding links in the chat as well. Uh, there is a question, should the plate be a paper plate or just a regular ceramic plate? A regular ceramic plate would be helpful because it's going to be wet, but I also think um, the paper plate might be useful in doing this activity later on. Yeah, thanks for asking that question. Okay. Great. Great. You know, a friend of mine gave me um, gave me flour, so brought us some flowers. And it was a re really nice thing to see the gradient of how it gets really dark over here and without even, without even noticing, it gets lighter and lighter um, toward, toward the end. And I, I thought this was a really good example of gradient. And also you see it in nature, it always, you can always find things in that nature that um, inspire your creativity. And you can kind of see how the green also is, is done um, in such a way. So this is a, a beautiful flower as um, spring is approaching in a couple of months, I guess. <laughs> Taking a while. All right, and I have the color wheel right over here. Um, this is my handy, ha handy dandy color wheel. I don't have a plate, actually. I cut out uh, the bottom of a bottle, a plastic bottle. And so this is my, uh, my water plate. I also eat lots of eggs. Um, and this I use as my palette. So you do not have to have this at all, but this is also to show you how household items can be used uh, for a project like, like this. I have my paper towel. I have my Sharpies. If I don't have Sharpies, I use just regular pencil or pen. And I have my, my brushes. You only need one for this activity, really. And of course, my food color. Has it expired? No, not really. So we can, I can use it to bake as well. <laughs> Thanks so much today for show, uh, for showing and showcasing each of these um, items, um, and also bringing in the flower. That's a that's a fantastic touch. There is a question yeah. about gradient. Gradient adds yes. depth, and there was something else that we didn't quite catch. Um, adds depth, and also um, I said it, it, it it's it's also beautiful. I said I think yes, you did. I, I can't really yeah. check back. <laughs> We can go back and watch it again. <laughs> okay, thank you yeah. for that. My memory is failing me right now, but yeah, thank you. I'm so glad this is being recorded. Um, and then I have my cup of water that I'm just going to pour into my, um, my little bowl over here. Masking tape, if you have it, it's great. If you don't, that is okay. This is not particularly the one that you uh, that I normally use, but this happens to be the one I have at home. So. You can have your paper set horizontally or vertically. I have it this way so the because the camera also works um, better this way. So I'm going to take the corners. And tape can be used in so many ways in art. It's one of my favorite tools. I have my corners taped. And the first thing we will do is free drawing. That's, that's, I'm just going to scribble. And let me show you a sample. This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to scribble, just like this, creating tangled and intertwined lines. Just like so. Wherever my, my hand leads me, there I'll go. I'll make sure that lines intersect, which means lines cross each other. 
they don't have to meet. It's, they meet, they meet, they don't, that's okay. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I have primary colors with me. This is yellow, blue, and can somebody tell me what the third one is? Red from Lily. Red, that's <laughs> right, <laughs> red. And what two colors would I need to mix to to get this green, which actually came in the box as well. Almost there. Blue and yellow. Blue and yellow, that's right. So technically I do not need this. I can use um, the, just these two to do this painting. And there's the red and I can make purple just by using the blue and the red. All right. Okay. Now, on your plate, on your ceramics or plastic plate, you can put a, a, just a drop of paint or a drop of food coloring. I'm going to start with this color because I know not, not everyone has these uh, uh, compartments. So I'm going to start with this color. And I'm going to change. Oh, I like the small one. Okay. Now, without diluting it with water or mixing it with water, or watering it, watering it down, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to choose one segment, one section of my drawing. And I'm going to paint it. All right, any questions? Oh, uh, Wendy, no problem at all, take your time. This time I did not add um, any water, but I will continue to, to add water to create a lighter shade of yellow. And today a question came in, um, yes. if uh, you ever paint with actual foods like eats or tea, um, any other ideas if we don't have food coloring or watercolor at the moment? I have done it with with tea and coffee and beets, and I have I've colored with those with those. But other than that, I don't think I have. And I'm curious, what do you suggest? Yeah, let me know in the chat what you suggest that I I play around with, and I'll be I'll be happy to report back. And I'm going to choose another segment. And this time I've added water. So the yellow, as you can see, is much, much lighter than that deep mustard yellow. Ooh, some suggestions are coming in. Um, yeah. I think inspired by the yellow. Um, turmeric. Uh, oh, that maybe. would be great. That'd be nice. Uh, yeah. Ketchup and mustard sound fun, right? Yes, Lily, I agree. Another vote for turmeric. So okay. I, I appreciate the, the call out for suggestions. I think it gets yeah, everybody. Yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I, I'm, I have, I have uh, turmeric in my cupboard, so I'm going to try that and definitely ketchup. I'm really curious about ketchup and mustard too. Yeah. And so I'm going to make it even lighter by adding more water.
almost as if I can't even see the yellow that much. Now it looks like apple juice a little bit. I'm going to pick another segment and I'm going to paint it. It might not be a, it might not show us clearly through my camera. But it's very, very light, it's very faint. Now I'm really curious what my color would look like if I paint it on wet paper. And how do I do that? First, you see that paper towel that I, um, I showed you earlier? I use it to clean my brush after I put it in, in the water. I dip it in the water a little bit. I don't think you can see the water. Dip it in a little bit. Clean the brush gently. Then I take a little bit of that water, which is not. And with just the water, I paint the paper. Ooh, this is my favorite part. So I'm gonna take the paint that is not diluted or mixed with the water. And I'm just gonna do a drop and see what happens. It's kind of cool, right? Kind of has a mind of its own. It's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> All right. So you can kind of see how the paint behaves differently. So I'm just going to leave it there to dry because I'll add, I'll come back and add a different shade of yellow to it, which kind of creates a gradient. I think I said depth and distance. Uh, I remember now, yeah. I think I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I think I said distance. Nice. Yeah. And, and someone here yeah. says that um, yeah. their artist friend paints yeah. with uh, their brewery's beer and local wine. So that, <gasps> yeah, that's really interesting. Yes. Right as you were kind of going into the, you know, the, this one that has a mind of its own almost. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yes. so, yeah, following the liquids. I, mm -hmm. I really like that. But I'm so curious about that dark blue. I am so curious about the beer too. Um, so, you know, we, we start with that and then now I'm really curious about the other colors and especially one that I can mix with yellow. So I would like the green just because more than a month has that color and I love it. Um, and okay. I'm gonna take blue. And if you have a, a, a separate area, on your plate where you can do a couple of drops of the blue, just like so, just like that. Um, okay, and we are going to do a gradient now. Now we're gonna start with a little bit of water. You can either mix on tape on the paper or you can mix mix on your palette. And I, I rather mix on my palette. I start with the with the light color first. And take the dark color. Ah, you see that beautiful green? That is nice. When you mix colors and it comes out as you imagine, it's so nice. Okay. Now I'm gonna start with making a line, a flat line, just like that. The next flat line, I add a little bit more water to my mix. And a little bit more water for the third one. Okay. 
And if you have excess water and you're just like, oh man, I didn't even want that to be there, um, take your paper towel, take your brush, dry it, and just like that, you can take the excess water off. Much like what we saw here on the flower, we are creating gradient that is darker to lighter, just like that. And I thought like I just switched it. Any questions, any thoughts? I like folks are busy painting. about 10 more minutes for you to work. And the point of this activity is not to finish, but it's merely to get started. If it takes you two weeks to finish, um, to finish your work, that is absolutely okay because only you can decide wh whether you're finished or not. Um, and when, you know, there are times when starting and finishing something is very important. Um, in art, there is that flexibility, and it's really, really nice to have. This is made by food color. You can kind of see how dark you can get it without mixing it with water. When you mix with water, how you can get gradients over here. And then you can see how kind of cloudy that you can like cloudy and fun you can make it by painting on wet paper. That's one way to do it. This one was made with very wet paint, which means I, I mixed it, I diluted it with water um, a lot. And I had this, this movement with my brush to drop the paint and have this kind of effect on my paper. I was just throwing paint kind of like that to create the popsicle, um, kind of what would be the popsicles drop-ins or something like that. Have any questions? Anybody wondering? Anybody having ideas that we can try? As we wait, in case folks have questions, um, again, I really appreciated you bringing in the rose and the flower to show um, gradient, and was wondering if there are other inspirations out there. Like I can, I like a sunset or a sunrise, <gasps> right? Those that is a great of, question. Yeah, what, what else oh. do you have? And another just kind of, um, not a question, but an affirmation, loving the thought of yeah. using food coloring and tea and coffee. So yeah, what, yeah. Do, what do you think about some other inspirations and folks who are here too, feel free to add them. Yeah, I'm so curious, I, I said, that, that's a great, um, thing to think about. Thank you. Okay. Someone just added pomegranate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be really nice. I uh, to, to paint the pomegranate or to paint with the pomegranate? Mm. I, I thought with one, but I That's think fun. maybe both <laughs> would oh. be really cool. <laughs> it would be really nice. <laughs> and if you think you made a mistake, um, again, like it's it's really are supposed to be fun. Um, there are really no mistakes. You can either either redo or keep on painting, and then you're you're going to be happy that you kept you kept painting over what you thought was a mistake. So, okay. 
and, and then we were we were right with pomegranate juice. Somebody confirmed. Oh, pink with pomegranate juice. Yes. And last year, Hudson's kindergarten art teacher taught them to paint yes. with instant coffee. Oh, I cool. see that is super. Yeah, I I like coffee. I drink coffee a lot, and I I like I like drawing with oh chocolate. I have also done it with chocolate. You know, when after you eat chocolate cake, and on your plate you take the back of the fork, and on your plate you you start drawing the negative space, which is the white part or whatever the bottom of the, the, the cake is, the white part starts to look like, so if you start scraping off the chocolate, it, in the contrast just looks so cool. It looks so cool. And I've done that with um, chocolate cake. Now ask your adults if you're at a restaurant. That sounds delicious and fun. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, someone else, and this one, this one actually is is a great one to share too. Um, they know yeah. people who use boiled red cabbage. Oh no, I have never seen that. I have seen onion, the onions, but I have not seen that. Yeah, or like the purple cabbage. And over the summer, we did a STEM challenge where, uh, if you mix that, depending on acids and bases, and then you get the okay. pH scale which actually had some fantastic shades of pink and purple. Um, so thanks for sharing that. Oh, wow, um, that is nice. Yeah. That is really nice. We have a question so about um, supplies. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Sade. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry, no problem. Okay, um, I love the idea of the egg carton for mixing paint, and I appreciate not having to purchase anything to make art. Anyone have other ideas for how to upcycle and create more art supplies or tools? Oh, well, I, you know, off the top of my head, I, I don't have, I don't have what I'm thinking of um, right at this moment. Um, you know, the, the classic toilet paper roll, <laughs> there's mm -hmm. always that one. Uh, what have I used? Oh, magazines, I use magazines all the time. Uh, there's a workshop that's happening in, in I think in three weeks, right? February 7th, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, where we use um, magazines and newspapers. Um, at the top of my, that's a great question. I wonder what folks um, are uh, would say in the chat, mm -hmm. would suggest. Yeah, someone's offering back cake decorating tools. So multi-purpose, <laughs> using your, your items for multi-purpose uses um, for, for ceramics. Cake for ceramics. decorating tools for my ceramics. Yeah. Nice. I uh, used a toothpick to add depth when water coloring. Oh, yes, that's great. And I, I you know what? Well, if you're working with pencil also, um, uh, Q-tips are a great way to shade, uh, to create shadows and to, to create, um, you know, to create nice gradient. I mean, so since we're, we're speaking about gradients, um, um, cotton balls are really great for that too. Yeah. Oh, now we're, we're really getting into it. I love it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have some more. We have tin cans make great upcycled flower bases. Kind of farmhouse do. Style. Yeah, and, um, and this is how you know, I use them for my brushes as well. Yeah. Exactly. Great, great. And someone else affirms the toilet paper roll, saving popsicle sticks. Yes. Uh, we have using chopsticks as knitting needles if you're into knitting. Oh, oh that yeah. is what a good idea, huh? That is a great idea. I've never thought about that. That is a wonderful idea. Thank you for sharing that. And then using cardboard boxes to make anything stand up. And then uh, for wrapping paper. Ooh, and this is a cool one. Um, raw potato into desired shape, a 